Okay, guys. Uh, hi, guys. Start here. Uh, welcome back. Or welcome to a new video. <laughs> um, yeah. This I told you in the last video that I would do this, and here I am. <sighs> oh, right. So basically, this all started. My friends and I at dismissal. We were getting ready for a bus to get called. Um, we all just sat there and um came up with this and then we all decided why well, not write this down because we're, we just wanted to continue a story then we noticed let's just write a book so here we are and if it doesn't make sense don't mind us we, we don't know what we're doing okay it's not a real book if you steal my idea i'm gonna i'm gonna hate you with my hammy attack yeah so we're weird we're also weird really weirdly obsessed with hamsters i don't i don't know why but anyway Garrett, Brayden, Nate, and Alex went to Home Depot and found a bucket. In the bucket, there were three hamsters, Humphrey, Jeremy, and Derek. And then three bad guys came out, which turned into the Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We were trying to get the... Oh yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. We were trying to get the hamsters and turtles to create the hat game. A.K.A. Hamsters and Turtles. Then Humphrey turned into a wizard and put a crack in the earth. Which caused... Um, Derek to fall into the earth and return as a unicorn. Um, just saying, those are the hamsters, Humphrey, Jeremy, and Derek. Um, Jeremy then dug a hole in the ground and activated his tree powers. He then became a tree. Then they started to sing, Tell me why he ain't nothing but a candle. Tell me why he ain't nothing but a randle. Tell me why I hear the lighter click from far away. They burn me every day. Alright, well, I'm not singing full on, so, yeah. If you're confused, good, because that was just a prologue. The three hamsters continue singing and... So I'm gonna turn the music down. Continue singing and summoned Randall the Candle. This is also a name I randomly just came up with. Well, in music class, we had to make a song, and that's the song me and my friend Braden came up with. Uh, Randall the Candle, so, yeah. The three hamsters continue singing and summoned Randall the Candle. Randall is a mysterious figure in hamster mythology and can only be summoned by the singing of three hamsters in the Home Depot parking lot. Randall picked them up. Hey, I'm, I'm reading about my hamsters book. Okay. Hi. Okay. That's okay. I guess it's fine. That's fine. Do you want to go look for your hockey stuff with me? I don't like know. Pads and all that stuff? I don't know. I'm check with you in like 30 minutes. Okay. okay. Anyway, Randall picked them up and flew away. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came with them, riding on there. Also, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles randomly disappear. I don't know why. We just suddenly. I don't know. We didn't like them or something. With them riding on Derek the Unicorn. Derek crash landed somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. Randall, Jeremy, and Humphrey found Derek, who was wounded. They all. They had found this. They had found a sick. No, no. They have to find. My typo. My bad. They had. They have to find the sacred black pearl to heal Derek. In the meantime, Humphrey conjured a spell with his little wizard hat and became the greatest chef alongside Remy. Randall in the game found Derek with Randall's magical powers. And Humphrey said, I can make a great dish if you find me the Black Pearl. And off they went in search of the Black Pearl just for Humphrey's dish. Chapter 2, and the Black Pearl. While Humphrey was preparing for the dish, the other hamsters were building a ship in the search of the Black Pearl. After the ship was built, they left the dock. It was just a little Jeremy. I just saying, I wrote this chapter, just, just saying. I just want to clarify that because it's the best one. Just to say, he was with his hamster Scooby Deer. It was just a little Jeremy. He was with his hamster Scooby Deer, ready for the search. Jeremy sailed out into the Bahamas and even into the Bermuda Bermuda Triangle. Then he had his first encounter with the beast known as Oh, it was just Squid. Squid. Never mind. When then this, when the Sea turned black, Jeremy pulled out a celery sword and prepared to fight the Kraken, holder of the Black Pearl. Jeremy took a sharp turn <laughs> Jeremy took a sharp turn to the left and the Kraken went under. Dreadful silence filled the air as Jeremy took out the carrot 
canon. Uh, I just want to say it again. I wrote this chapter. Okay? Be proud of me. And because this is a story, he somehow had hit the Kraken. Then Rose tired and the, he hit the Kraken. Then that Rose tired and days. But once again, this is a story. So the Kraken had ordered the squids to attack the ship. Jeremy was thrown overboard. And so it just happened that he was the only hamster that could swim. That couldn't swim. Weeks later, Humphrey was worried, and in the distance, they saw a tsunami. Wait, no, it was the Kraken. Jeremy was on its back, holding the black pearl. Since Jeremy used his tree powers, he managed to tame the Kraken right on the Kraken and show it off to his brothers. <sighs> the time that... <laughs> I also wrote this one, and I'm very proud of it, too. That time that a dino sent the hamsters to the back rooms. <laughs> As Jeremy rode on the back of the Kraken, he gave it to a carrot as a thank you, and the Kraken gave him a bag. This wasn't just any bag. Oh yeah, this also disappeared too, this random bag. I'm gonna have to put it in our new story. If you guys want to see more, tell me. Meanwhile, Jeremy was fishing through his bag, like, the never-ending bag, aka Jeremy is not Mary Poppins. Meanwhile, Jeremy was fishing through his bag and pulled out a kitchen for Humphrey. Yes, he pulled out a kitchen out of his bag for Humphrey, where he made two baguettes where he fed one to Derek, which brought him back to life, and the other one started talking in his life. They named him Brady Kruger. I, knew, I came up with that name. The smell attracted a dino, though, and with one mighty swing of its tail, it knocked the hamsters into the back rooms. They woke up. Alright, no, no more happy music. It was just a musty carpet and support bowls. All of them. Yellow with the carpet on them. <laughs> Thus, Jeremy pulled out his trusty walking talkie tacos aka walkie talkie they all split up for what felt like a day they wondered and Derek had found a garage door he needed a screwdriver he turned on the walkie talkie and heard a distorted voice saying I'll give you 10 seconds the garage door opened there was a stick man and a paper taped to his face with a smiley face on it in red if you guys know what that's from tell me Seven feet tall, and the ten seconds were up by then. It lunged at Derek and cut his leg. He started to run and found the, and found the vent. Everybody was in there except Jeremy. He was running and said, Run, it will be okay. I'll, I'll come find you guys. And tears started forming. He, he continued, I'll miss you guys. Goodbye. The monster grabbed his leg, and well, they didn't know what, what to do except for cry. They continued crawling to the vent and fell. All of them woke up in the future. Well, it looked horrible. There were a few houses. Inside one, there was a computer and a few VHS tapes. They watched them and saw they were from the past, which meant they were in the future. You guys like that? Yeah. Turn on the nice music again. Jeremy was dead. Well, he had to be. It is oh, the end and the apocalypse. Well, he had to be. It has been years, and all of them... Together, nearly survived their day in the back rooms. Just as they finished watching the tapes, they heard something outside. They looked out. It was a person. Wait, if you got this far, I want to say it. This is about to get confusing. This wasn't a person. It was a zombie. Now, you probably think this is going to be one of those boring zombie apocalypse books. But no, it's not. The mutant, pretty much a zombie, I just wanted to be different, it was getting pretty weird. I mean, it was twitching like crazy. Then it just stopped and exploded. Derek said, well, that was easy. Derek walked outside and saw his little... This little coin on the ground. Next to it was a note saying, Throw this in a well. I decay what rhymes with well, except for... Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so, Derek was stupid enough to throw it in. And then... Okay. Um, throw it. And then a black and red sp spirit... I'll edit that. Spirit... Spurt... Spirit thing floated out and just screamed. Derek slapped it. <laughs> the ground started to shake. A giant, twisted, disgusting thing emerged from the ground, and Derek saw that his hand was beginning to be covered in black vines. Anyway, the weird giant thing was running at them. FYI, this thing was only like 10 feet tall, not 100, so keep that in mind. It began to pick up speed, and out of nowhere, it reached out his hand, showing giant claws. Derek, Humphrey, and Randall ran inside a house. They noticed Randall had stopped burning and lost all his powers. They were concerned. A scraping sound was all they heard. 
They had to do something, but what? It was hopeless. Just as the thing was at the top of the stairs, ready to lunch, it stopped. And they saw Celery go through him, then fell behind him with Jeremy with some friends. The end? More? That's, that's me asking you. You know what? We'll, we'll read the second one. What do you mean, no documents? I literally... Do I have to sign in again? Okay. Um... How do I do this? You know what? Here, this is part one. Uh, part two, I'll post right after this, okay?